2019 will mark the beginning of Governor, Governor Jared Polis' administration, where he will have fellow Democrats in all of the other state officer positions. The legislative session will open with a Democratic State House and Senate and new leadership in both wings of the Capitol. How Democrats will utilize their complete control of the levers of government in Colorado remains a big question heading into next year. Patty, Democrats running the legislature and the governor's office. Kids in a candy store or responsible adults? Somewhere in between, probably adults with a sweet tooth, I think is what <laughs> we'll see because there are people who have all their pet projects and they are gonna want to really take a bite out of as many of those as possible. Will there be enough uh, sane and sober heads to prevail on things that are just way too pie in the sky. It's happened before, but it's not the ideal situation for Polis going in just because you like to have someone you can blame. And right now it's wide open. He's going to have a honeymoon of at least, what, 10 days. He gets inaugurated on the 8th. Um, the legend, first bills will really only be voted on you know, a couple weeks later. So he's going to have a little time to shake things out, to have his blue shoes party or his blue sneakers party. We'll see just how cool Denver looks. I think I want to live in my Denver rather than um, David's. And for that matter, Eric's. <laughs> looks like very bad, very bad years. <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll try to keep it as rosy as we can around here for the ne next year. Uh, David, in 2013, Democrats did uh, overreach on some topics and paid for it the following year with uh, some uh, recalls in the state Senate. Do you think those are lessons learned or it's all that be damned, let's just get done as much as we possibly can? I think there, there's a division within the Democrats. Um, you will hear some voices who will assure you that at least at the leadership levels, uh, they know that repeating the, the wild rumpus of 2013 uh, is fun as it may be at the time, uh, is destructive in the long run. But the uh, the Jacobin element in the Democratic Party is stronger than it, it, it's ever been. So there are absolutely plenty not just a few, which there always are, but plenty of, of real hardcore ultras on lots of issues. And, you know, we're now in a situation where you're, you're on the third backup system, uh, which is, in this case, it, it's the governor's good instincts. Um, and he's, he's been uh, strong on education reform. So I think at least on the, there are folks in the party who would like to, as much as possible, wipe out charter schools and, and all forms of educational choice. And I think Polis will be uh, a, a solid opponent of that. Eric, do you see anyone uh, managing the brake pedal this year, uh, of the upcoming year, 2019, at the legislature? That's been my question. It's who, who, who controls the brakes and is there a brake pedal at all? The word I come back to is the word tenuous. I think what distinguishes this coming legislative session from some in the past is once the Democrats really took over at 2004 election, so January 2005, and for a number of years thereafter, even after 2010 for a while, there was this feeling that the Democratic majority was tenuous, that it was at risk, that they always had to constantly be careful. I don't get that sense anymore. I think there is now a feeling that this is a this majority has some permanence, it has some security to it. They don't have to be afraid of their shadow. They don't always have to run in fear of the next election, which encourages a lot of the instincts that Patty and David were talking about. When you add that on top of the Democratic Party becoming much more ideologically animated, much more left, leftward tilting. So I, I think there's gonna be an attitude of go big here. I think that if there's a brake pedal, it might not be a person, it just might be the budget itself. It's at some point you have to figure out how to pay for it. You know, pre, 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 kindergarten for all, full day kindergarten. Great. Who's going to pay for it? Early childhood education statewide. Great. Who's going to pay for it? A lot of these other big dreams also have big uh, financial tickets. So maybe the budget becomes the limiting factor. Natasha, what do you think when we're sitting around the same table and Let's call it the uh, middle of May. The legislative mm -hmm. session has finished. We're through the first five months of Jared Polis' uh, first administration. What are the kind of themes, what, what are you expecting that, us, that we'll be talking about? I think we'll be talking about this very question. How much um, did they get away with? Did, was there just this, this very progressive um, agenda that was pushed through? I, I have to say, 
I don't necessarily envy that position that they're in because anything that they will be that will be passed will be done so under the cloud of well they're just getting this through because they have control of all three um, areas and and whether that's justified or not and then in addition to that anytime they they stretch it's going to come up as well so they have this this difficult line to walk between following through on campaign fine our campaign promises and they made plenty of those I mean from healthcare to education to transportation and beyond so how many of those can they follow through with to make sure they get elected but how many how do they also make sure that they don't go through with too much so that they don't get reelected. And that's going to be a difficult line for them to figure out this, this session.